Hello and welcome to video 3 in this Diaspora Space Build 4 tutorial series. Today we will be looking at life support for our Space Build 4. So, at the end of our last video we had just finished attaching our core to our brand new spaceship. So, next thing to do now, we're going to go to the Space Build 4 tab and click on the generator spawner. In this new version of life support, the ship core replaces the resource nodes from life support 3 and life support 2. So everything will be connected to it, or to the ship at least, by welds which we can have to automatically in the tool. So anything constrained to the ship will link itself to the core, provided the core is also attached to the ship. So for free power generation and to start most systems off, we are going to need a solar panel. Very similar to Life Support 3 and previous versions, point them at the sun, you get power. Since they are welded, they are automatically connected and already producing power. The multiplier is affected by the angle between them and the sun. In most maps this is simply directly upwards. So all at 100% efficiency. The next thing we need is storage for the power we are now generating. So there isn't individualized storage containers in Space Wolf 4 just to reduce the entity count. So the only storage you're going to need is resource caches. So I'm just going to put two of these on either side just because, you know, symmetry. And since they are welded automatically by the tool, they are automatically linked to the network and automatically filling with energy. We're at 14% already. One thing some of you might remember from back in the days of Life Support 2 is how you could change the model of your storage containers to match another prop. That feature has been brought forward into Space Build 4 and by simply right clicking on a prop you can turn any other storage device into a different prop and the values of what it stores or what it produces will scale with the prop's volume. So if your ship needs more storage or faster generation, instead of placing down more of a single generator, you can instead use bigger props if you can fit it. Very popular ones are the Mandrak models, which are a custom addition to the server, and are models essentially ported from EVE Online. There are some very big props that were previously used in the Life Support 3 spawn menu, but now you can take any prop you want and spawn models using it. So you can quickly see we're getting to much larger storage caches. So if you're building a ship large enough to fit these much bigger props, go ahead. The same thing applies to all the other generators. Um, the only exception really is the solar panel where instead of the volume being the determining factor for how much energy it produces, it's the simply the surface area with that top face. Alright, so now let's move on to some of the other generators you're going to need to survive in space. The most important one is going to be your life support dispenser. This is the thing that will make and fill existing life support canisters with the good stuff that you need to survive in space. On the right side of your HUD, you'll notice these two dials named life support and empty canisters. While in space or another hostile environment, you'll start working your way through your percentage of life support canisters and producing empty canisters to match. Empty canisters can be removed from your suit and placed into your ship storage by pressing E on the dispenser. Once they're back in your network, you can refill them using the recycler, which will take empty cans, use a little bit of oxygen much less than the dispenser, and produce complete cans. So to get oxygen, one of the easiest ways is to use a compressor. This will produce various amounts of gases depending on the concentration of them in your plant's atmosphere. So as you can see here, now that it's linked, if we turn it on, we will start producing a set amount of oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and CO2. Oxygen is the one we're concerned with for the most part. So, as you can see, that's moving up. To check the actual concentrations, we can use one of the two network devices. The first of these is the resource monitor, which when linked to your ship will display a readout of information about what's in your network. And then, looking at our atmospheric probe, we can see the explanation behind those values we saw on the compressor. So as you can see, we have almost Earth-like proportions of gases in this planet's atmosphere. The rightmost value on each resource's readout is how long it would take for that resource to either be filled or be emptied. So as you can see here, with the rate at which our compressor is pulling resources into our ship storage, it would take two months of running that on continuously to empty this planet's atmosphere. Which means you don't have to worry about suffocating everyone on the spawn planet just yet. So we've had our compressor running for about a minute at this point, and as you can see, we still have not made any life support canisters. So unless you feel like waiting forever, we're going to need a little bit more horsepower to start filling this within a reasonable time frame. 
So one thing we can do is start using multipliers. Using the wire debugger tool, we can see that this generator, just like most of the ones in Space Build 4, have two wire inputs, on and multiplier. Since our compressor has a multiplier of one by default, we can use the simulate data tool as a very quick way to set that to a higher value. So this can be used in place of wiring a constant value to very easily set something to multiplier of 10, for example. I put 10 in as the value and then simply click on the multiplier input. And as you can see, that life support available value is going up a lot faster. And so is the oxygen bars on our resource monitor. So now we can see that energy is dropping rapidly. We are using far too much power than we can generate with only those three little solar panels we made earlier. See the energy input with its percentage at the top? When that reaches 100%, the generator will run for a single second. We'll generate a little bit more oxygen and use our entire store of energy. So, multiplier of 10 may be a bit too high. Let's set that factor 1 and then we can try using a constant value to find a much better multiplier for us. So, the constant value tool. If you can't find it, there is a search bar at the top of the wire menu which can make easy. Um, navigating all of this folder is quite a bit easier. Here we are only going to need one value, but if you're wiring up a bunch of different generators, you want independent multipliers for each, you can set that value or number of values up there. For now though, we only need a single value of type number, and we're going to start off with a multiplier of 4. So we put it down. Now we need to find the advanced wiring tool. This tool will be located right at the bottom of the wire tabs tool menu, under the tools folder. So we take this out, just look at our compressor to see its inputs, and then we can right click to move down one, left click to select it, and then just left click again on our constant value. We now have a multiplier of four. Now we turn it on, we're generating much less than before, but and look at that, we're still losing power. So four clearly hasn't worked. Let's try a step down. You just need to find the constant value tool again, using the search menu, if you want. So let's input a value of 2. Half it. We'll see if we have a positive energy balance this time. Let's check our resource monitor, and what do you know? We have a net positive of all our resources now. This is what you're generally aiming for when tweaking your multipliers, but we haven't solved our original problem, which was time. We are generating everything in positive amounts, but we're not generating very much of it. Over this time we've only made 44% of a single suit. If we take that in, it combines with the 45 originally had, we now have 95% of our suit storage, which would be good for between 13 and 14 minutes of survival in space, and less time on a more hostile planet. Your instinct here might be simply to scale up both your energy generation and your resource multiplier, but as you can see, We've already cut that 2 month time in half, just the multiplier 2, so so if you go increasing the multiplier to ridiculous levels, you're just going to start eating into those non-renewable resources contained within your planet's atmosphere. So let's instead use our infinitely available water source found on most planets. The water pump, very similar to the one you recognize from Life Support 3, but it functions a little bit differently. Instead of dropping this in your pond and then connecting to your ship, it can become part of your ship it will instead suck up water directly below it. So have a visible path from it to the ground, and then all you need to do is park your ship above the lake and you can start sucking up water into your storage. As you can see here, we are too high up and not above the water anyway, so we turn it on. All we're doing is using power. Instead, we can take the precision tool, like I explained how to use yesterday, and use its nudge function with entire contraption mode checked. With our value of 100 in, it's just going to take a few hits to line it up over the lake, one more, and then we move it down. Now there is a maximum height to the water pump, so you can see I turned it on here, it doesn't turn on yet. We're going to need to pull it down a little bit more. And here we go, we start sucking up water. The effect is a lot fancier now because it was still in development when this footage was recorded. But you can see, we are already creating quite a bit of water. Next step, of course, is we're going to need a generator to start using it. It's all well and good at having water, but you can't breathe water. So, as you can see, it's coming in at quite a steady rate, and we still have positive energy, so we don't have to worry about its multiplier for the time being. So moving right along, we're going to use a water splitter to split our water into two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. This tiny little machine here, 
is going to take not very much power, not very much water either, and start producing oxygen and hydrogen. So, now that we've got it on, you can see we are gaining oxygen and hydrogen at a very slow speed. What you could do is just take out the generator again and just start laying down more of the same machine. Just spamming them all along your hull, but no. We know better. So, instead, let's clear all of those and we'll stick with our one device. We could make it a little bit bigger, but I think this size can still be useful because the maximum multiplier you can have is a hundred. So let's try that to see if this is actually going to be too small. Wire it up, there we go, consuming a hundred times the amount of resources, producing a hundred times the amount of output. So now when we go and look at our resource monitor, we will quickly see, whoops, all our energy is gone and all our water too. So at this point clearly we're going to have to change something. So I go ahead and turn all our generators off. And now I think by this point our dinky little three solar panels on the top, they aren't going to cut it. So let's instead start using that entirely full storage container of hydrogen that we have and invest in fusion power. These generators are a lot bigger, by default anyway, you can scale them down just like every other one. And they consume energy, a little bit of startup energy and hydrogen and produce massive amounts of energy instead. So now you can see we are pretty much almost filling our entire storage. But we have to be careful we don't run out of hydrogen. As you can see that's falling rather rapidly, so now we can easily afford to turn on all our other generators. And let's see if we have net positive energy. What do you know? Everything is going up. You see oxygen occasionally falling every now and again because the dispenser is taking it to make cans. 78% and very quickly rising. So we can finish topping up our suit, we now have 100%. So if we quickly step onto space, don't do this at home because you won't be able to fly back, you'll be giving your life to the endless void, but you can now see my life support is dropping down to 99% and 98% by the time we get back. We can then use our dispenser to top up our 98% and put those existing cans back into storage. As you can see at the moment, we have no empty life support canisters. This is still generating just fine, so if we go and use our dispenser, we can put them in and then refill them with recycler. So I take those two cans out, the empty canisters go in. So now that they're in here, with a very small value, you can see 17 of them are in there, which makes up that 2% that we lost. If we turn on our recycler, we'll start using a little bit of oxygen and turning those empty life support canisters into full life support canisters. Recycling your old canisters is more efficient than having the dispenser simply generate new ones, so try to do this whenever possible. So this concludes the basics of Spaceworld 4's life support. If you know what you're doing to actually make your ship fly, you can go ahead and get started on that. But otherwise, tune in next time and we'll be running through how to use the gyropod. See you then.